So I have actually been thinking about this for a long time. I love the Sony a7C. I've had it forever. I really didn't want to get rid of it, but I just wanted to try the ZV-E1 to see. It's so tempting to me just because it's such a lightweight camera. And if you know anything about me, like I'm obsessed with the lightest weight gear. And after using the a7IV with the Sony a7C, I just kind of gravitate the a to the a7C all the time because it's so lightweight. So I was like, why don't I just get the lightest camera ever? And the Sony ZV-E1 is the lightest camera that you can get that's full frame. So I'm keeping all my lenses. I sold the a7C and I recently found a used ZV-E1 for like $1,800 on BH Photo. The main reason I wanted the ZV-E1 over the a7C is the ZV-E1 is gonna just have way better stabilization. The majority of my stabilization right now is just using a GoPro because I hate heavy setups, right? So I, I don't wanna use a gimbal or anything like that. And the fact that I can use this camera um, with gimbal-like performance is the main reason I'm deciding to use it. So I wanted that gimbal like footage, I wanted, I wanted the ability to have that stabilization um, and then also that low light sensor. So a lot of times I like being out in nature, I like doing the astrophotography at night and so I really wanted a really nice low light sensor in combination with my 24 millimeter 1.4. And I know a lot of people are saying this camera is junk. There's actually some poor reviews on Amazon. I think it has like four, four stars right now. And the main reason people hate on this camera is because it overheats. And I totally understand that. If I was doing podcasting or if I was doing streaming um, for long periods of time, I would not recommend this camera because it's not made for doing long form video content. But the thing is, I don't normally shoot long form video content. I mostly do short form like this and I'm just gonna, I mean, I'll probably just use it for five minutes at a time and then I'll turn it off and then use it again. So I think for a lot of content creators that are creating videos that way, it's a really good camera. But if you're doing like 15, 20, 30 minute videos, like it may not be the best camera for you. Another reason I got the ZV-E1 is I wanted the AI features with like animals and birds and wildlife. I want to start um, shooting with telephoto lenses and because I haven't had a telephoto lens in years and I wanted to start doing more bird um, video, um, birds in flight and wildlife because I live in this place where there's tons of wildlife around me. And I think it would be cool to be able to, I thought it'd be cool just to have better footage um, when I'm doing video. And I also want to try the stills mode. And I know that a lot of, you can't really do wildlife or any action with uh, mirrorless cameras. Uh, for whatever reason, you're going to get like this really bad motion warping effect when you shoot birds in flight at like high shutter speeds. So I understand that. I just mainly wanted to try it out. And I, want, I also wanted to try uh, just the video features. And I do plan on getting another Sony stills camera. I really wanted the a7R5, but I can't really afford it right now. Um, so I'm going to just try this camera. I want to test it to its limits and use it like, like you would use it as like a stills camera, but also a video camera, just like a hybrid shooter. I know it only has 12 megapixels, but I'm, I'm kind of over the whole megapixel things and I don't mind shooting with um, less than 36 or 24 or 40 or whatever. Like, I'm fine with just shooting with less. I think a lot of times when we have just too much equipment, we don't focus on like the simple things and the things that are most important. And so that's why I just wanted to get this camera to just focus on it for the next few months. I don't know if this camera is gonna work out perfectly. I may end up getting the Sony a7R5, but the main reason I'm getting this camera is it's just so lightweight. It's 14 ounces. It's the same weight as the Sony A6100, and that's an APS-C camera. It's almost the same weight as the ZV-E10, which is super tiny. And I mean, I know it's not the most durable camera, and that's not why I want it. I just mainly want it because it's so lightweight, easy to take around with you. And it seems like when a camera is that lightweight, I just have a tendency to use it a lot more. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks.